All right, here's a quick question for you. It's not going to be a lecture. I'm going to ask you some questions, but they're answering me. So this is the first question. Who are these two people? C. C. You sure? Yes. You want to call a friend? Yes. <laughs> yeah, fine. All right, so next question is, who was the first black woman to win Wimbledon? because it was none of them. This was the first black woman to win Wimbledon, and she won it all the way back in 1957. 1957. And she won it again in 1958. And she also won the French Open in 1956. But I can guarantee you got on Stratford Circus right now, and I'm just walking around the street and ask people, who was the first black woman to win Wimbledon? They'll tell you who is Because they've not been given the accurate, true information about their history, their past, or what's been done by people who came before them. I can guarantee you, Venus and Serena know who the first black woman was. Um, and many other people know, but they kind of keep it a secret. Her story is quite interesting because if you look at the date, 1957, that is two years after 1955. And in 1955, a woman took a seat at the front of a bus and got kicked off. What was her name? Yes, yeah, so now you can see the kind of background she came from. She came from a background of segregation of the country because of her skin. Um, even though 1955 is 10 years after 1945, which of course was the end of the Second World War. So in World War II, the guys are fighting for freedom, democracy, justice. And when they got back home, they didn't get it. So let's see what else is going on. This is Princess Nur Eniat Khan. What is she famous for? A, B, or C? C. 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 Confident? Yeah. You know the deal? You know the deal? All right, you know the deal. Fine. Well, you're right, right, it is C, but the power of the stereotypes is, because there are often lots of stereotypes, lots of negative perceptions and images of black and Asian women. And the power of those negative images is so strong that when I go to schools and send a presentation of black history, and I talk to young people, and they know what they're for, they know from the black men, and I ask them this question, they tell me, A. She must be made in curious. <laughs> it's true. And that's what, when we talk about being brainwashed, that's the sort of thing we're referring to, that you don't have accurate information. This woman was a princess. She grew up in Paris. She spoke fluent French. She was forced out of France because of the German invasion. So she's a refugee. She got a job with the BBC. Um, she actually had a job. She actually had her own radio show reading children's stories. So she used to write children's books. Um, but that was enough because she wanted to do something for her country. She wanted to do something for the king and the queen to sort of fight for Britain. So she volunteered to join the Royal Air Force. And then she volunteered to train to be trained as a spy. And then she volunteered to go and live in France, even though the Germans had invaded France. So she volunteered to be an undercover operative, a spy. Um, and she spent time there sending information back on what the French were doing, what the Germans were doing, spying on them for the British. Somebody stitched her up and said, oh, that girl there, she's a spy. So the Gestapo came and arrested her. And they put her, well, they arrested her put her in prison. So she tried to escape the first time. And they said to her, if you escape again, we're going to beat you up. So what'd she do? She tried to escape again. And the second time they said, well, they, well if you escape again, we're going to really fix you in a proper. So what do you think she did? She escaped again. And this time they said, listen, right? If you sign this document saying you refuse to escape ever again, if you promise us not to escape, we'll, we'll, we won't hurt you too much. Well, so what do you think she did? Uh, she didn't actually escape. She said, I'm not going to sign it. And then they sent her to a place called Dachau, which is a concentration camp. And after 10 months there, some of which was in sultry confined all by herself in a little block of cell or someplace, they shot her executed her. And that's how come she is a World War II hero. For that extraordinary effort, she got the George Cross. And she also got the Cross de Guerre, which is a French equivalent, you could say. So it's a, what French people would give if they really read the battle. And it's interesting because you often hear lots of things about Muslims, because of course, if you go back to her name, you can tell that's a Muslim woman. She's a princess of the Muslim um, religion. But how many young Muslim boys and girls, or how many people in general, have ever heard that there were Asian women fighting for it in World War II? And why don't they know? That's a real question. Alright, how about this woman? Name was that woman. She was a pilot. She flew Red Cross supplies to refugees in Belgium. She was a secret agent spying the Germans. She raised over three million pounds for the war effort in one year. 
She was the most famous black woman in the world. She rescued refugees by getting visas and passports. And in 1963, she spoke at the march on Washington at the site of Martin Luther King. Who is that? One man says Josephine Baker. Anybody want to agree with him? You know who wants to be a millionaire, right? It's the final question. Right? You have a choice. You have a choice. You can go for Josephine Baker or you can go for someone. Which one are you going to go for? Josephine Baker is the correct answer. Let's have a look at her. And the thing is, let's go back to her. Because you would think that a black woman who did all that would be known across the world. You'd think that every black child would know her name, wouldn't you? You wouldn't think so. That's not the case. And why not? Because not enough people actually invest in their education. Sometimes we ask them for a donation and they give us 50 Right? That's him across the road there. He's showing a film called, well, he used to show a film called, um, what's that called 50 Cent now? Get Rich or Die Trying, right? There's a film called Date Movie. And actually it's a film now called Scary Movie. I guarantee you to go there right now and people are paying six pounds to see that rubbish. And when we ask for the nation, we get what, 20p, 50p? So what's going on there? Maybe somebody's been brainwashed. Anyway, let's get on with uh, Josephine Baker's story. So this is what she looks like in her uniform as a sub eater of the French Auxiliary Women's Air Force. Okay? She was awarded the Croix de Guerre in yeah, Hansel what she can get. The Legion d'Honneur and the Rosette de Resistance. Because she was also, all those things I just mentioned, she was an undercover agent, um, she raised funds for the troops. She actually wrote herself, personally, sat down and wrote 1,500 letters to all the troops in sort of the, the, the Western Front. Because she was a big star. Actually, let me show you a picture. There you go, that's what she looks like. That is just a good data. She was actually born in America, um, in St. Louis, Missouri. And she grew up very, very, very poor. I mean, she used to have to go looking through garbage cans to get food. Um, but she's a very good dancer, a good singer. And over time, she became internationally famous. She danced in the famous Folie Bergère, the, the Folie Bergère, which is London in Paris, so those people speak French, and the fact that it's easy. Um, and she was known throughout the world. But she wasn't just like a big star. She was conscious. The woman fought racism in about 25 different countries. Wherever she went, she would volunteer to talk against racism, against racism, um, on a regular basis. So she is quite a famous woman, or rather should be a famous woman. A lot more people should know about her. I've got four words for this guy. Check the brother out. <laughs> Check the brother out, yes. Look, look with him, as the Jimmy would say, right? That's my Jimmy Nicholas for Does that man look like he's got self-confidence? Because he looks like he's got self-esteem. Yeah. Yes. When we have our mentoring programs in North and South London, we have particular sessions on self-identity, knowing who you are, and self-esteem, how you feel about yourself. And we said that if you know both of those things, you have a better bearing, a better sort of uh, confidence in general, and you are able to project yourself in life. This man represents that. And part of the problem that some of our young people have is that they don't get to see enough of men who look like this. Because how many of you saw a guy like this when you went to school? When I was at school, I never saw anybody like this. At least my, 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 my history books, rather. I never saw this guy. Um, his name is Flight Lieutenant John Henry Smith or Smith of Sierra Leone. So Sierra Leone is also involved in World War II. They're sending people to fight for Britain. Um, and actually, if you look at him, he's, he's a bit cheeky. Because look at his cap. You're not really supposed to be. In fact, there's two guys from the army at the airport in the room now. So, uh, I wouldn't embarrass them, but they're both in the services. One did, one, one did three years, one did about I think, ten years, but I wouldn't embarrass them. Um, but you're not really supposed to wear your hat like that, right? Let me show you you're supposed to wear. That is how you're supposed to wear a hat. <laughs> what were you laughing at? That's my dad. Oh, oh, you was laughing just a minute ago. <laughs> 